by the time that we started painting, man, every artist started hearing about what was happening at the school. By the end of that year, it was 74. Wow. Went from 40 artists to 74 because during Basel, they all started showing up to a school saying, can I add to this? Can I do this? Can I do that? And none of them asked for anything. They asked for money. They didn't they care how much you're paying. Nothing. They're like, we love what this is. This is different. This is not just random walls in Wynwood that, you know, could belong to whatever business that's going to make however amount of money off yep. of it. Now we're doing it for the school. And question. Yeah. Is that still the way it is right now? Like the artist still up? Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, we it's did it 10 epic. years ago. Right now we have over, I think, the exact number I think is 92 pieces on that school. Wow. On that one school. And you continue to add more or do you change them out or? I mean, it depends really. It, it, we want to do more schools because we saw what it did for that school. Got you. We did the elementary school a block away. We've done that one twice. We did it in 2016. In 2017, they called me and said, listen, um, the walls are deteriorating. By the inside, there's leaks. We have to blow out all the walls. Your art's got to go. We're like, shit, safety for the school. You know, it is what it is. It goes, yeah. please come back. So we did that one twice. Um, we've done Edison. We've done uh, South Miami K through A. Um, we've done you know school in Brownsville. We we've done a few schools now, and then every single school that we've painted, we've noticed a difference in grades, attendance, behavior. I mean, it's a blueprint for how to fix schools at least one way. Yeah, that's incredible. Because you're yeah. now showing these kids that are just all it is is it's it's constant stimulation for them. They're like. They, they see, they, they feel, like I've had kids tell me, we feel like they care about us now. Yeah. You know, so it's like a blueprint of how this it's is like a, a way to Now they're proud of their school. Going to school, yeah. Instead of hating it like yeah. before. We had, I, think, I think what Robert did was epic because it became like a blueprint, he says. Like now I've seen it in Smith, I get goosebumps. I've seen it in so many cities, so many countries. They're duplicating it and it's working. So like for me... The raw project and what they have done is incredible because the the I don't even think that he understands the benefit and how far this wave has gone. Wow! With a, just a simple, stupid idea. You so know? you started it with it's called the raw project. Mm -hmm. And the how raw. did that, how did the idea come about, bro? It was simple because it was just as simple as I was helping artists get on walls in Winwood, and when we met with that principal, she had just arrived at that school two months before. Young Dr. April Williams. She heard us talking about what we do in Winwood. She said, why don't you paint the school instead of just one wall? We all came to that conclusion. Wow. I'll give her all the credit in the world for starting this, for, for being in. that. She, she was a, she's a fucking queen. That woman should have a statue. They, she fixes that school. It goes to capacity. A school that was built for, I believe it was 1,500, had just over 400 kids by the time we started painting and losing them by semester to charter schools or whatever because those kids weren't learning anything yeah. there. They didn't have money for anything. They had money to bring teachers who were really just guardians of these kids until they had to go home because they yeah. weren't learning. Yeah, they're treated like undesirables. They didn't have the tools. You know, I could make you the greatest cafe con leche in the world, but if you if this, if you give me, you know, the tools, I'm not going to make you shit. Yeah. So this could be the greatest teacher in the world, but she, she doesn't have the tools to teach these kids. What are they going to do with it? Yeah. Nothing. They just have to stand there and hope to God none of them kill each other yeah. by the end of the day, which was a <laughs> legitimate fear back then. That's crazy. This is a true story. I was, it was like 2, 3 in the morning one day. Diana Contreras was painting her piece outside the entrance of the school. There were drive-bys, like constantly happening in Wynwood. You hear gunshots in the air, all that stuff. The next day... One, one of those nights, it, it happened. We saw the drive. They were, I mean, hustling around Wynwood. Somebody was shooting at each other. Wow. The next day, the kids were talking about it. Main throw to ask one of them, do you know what they were shooting? He goes, oh, it could be this. It could be that. He started throwing out a bunch of gun names. I go, do you know who Bugs Bunny is? He goes, who's Bugs Bunny? So these kids knew all these names of all these guns. They had no idea who the fuck Bugs Bunny was. None. This, we're not talking about a hundred years later. Bugs Bunny was still very much a show. They still had cartoons yeah, on TV. Yeah, it's like everyone knows them. They don't know anything about that. So, you know, something that we were very proud of was we got a, uh, uh, we were involved with, I was able to get involved, typo and books from Primary Flight because they were the ones who actually created what Winwood is now. 
So Inwood had graffiti for years before, I mean, before I even knew what the hell any of that was, sincerely. I mean, all these crews, these guys were just doing what graffiti artists do. But as far as Winwood becoming what it is now, it was all started by Primary Flight and these group of local Miami artists that just started bringing artists to paint and do an actual, I guess, an event or a mural project or a festival. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's just a bunch of friends coming to paint walls and turn Winwood what it is. And... What bothers me about this whole, and I'm just going all over the place. You're gonna have to pause. No, me, no, pause I like it, bro. You're you're, you're spitting you, you, your information. Gone, like based on my experience from the last thing, it's good to stop and they can edit editing. Yeah, okay. It's good to stop and rethink and like focus so yeah. you are accurate. Yeah, we want the best shit. Well, accuracy not, accuracy won't be an issue. It's more like. Like yeah, like jumping around. Right. No, you're good. You're good. Like usually in those cases, like like obviously this we're talking about something else. But to, to turn it into like a clip, I would say something like, "Robert, what do you think? When did start? When did Winwood start? What was the inception of Winwood art?" I think if I had to put a name, a date, it'd be 2007 when Primary Flight, when it became the gallery that the world wanted to come and paint. Now. That every fucking artist comes every winter to come. As much as they talk shit about it all the year and say, oh, when was not the same? They're all here in December because <laughs> it's their business. It's turned. It's what Broadway is to musicals. That's what Winwood is to street art. And it's become art. So much so that Art Basel, the, the, the company, I think they threatened to leave Miami. And they were like, so? We yeah. don't need you anymore. We have scope. We have this. We have that. All the artists already leave. And they caved, and they're still here. They yeah. still bring their thing here. So it was 2007, for sure, when Books, Christina, um, and I believe uh, Chris O. I, I don't know if he was with them at the time, but I know Books and Christina, who are a married couple, who are the, the head of primary projects. And they, they worked with Typo Grand, who's also a Miami local artist, and Chris O., who passed away a few years ago. And they started bringing artists from everywhere. Then comes... Tony Goldman from New York sees all this is going on. He had a couple buildings there and tried to hire them. They said, now we'll do our thing. He said, all right, no problem. Then I'm going to do my own thing. And he went and started. That's when the exploitation of the artist started coming. They'll say that, you know, they, they do this for the artists. They do it for all the artists and for the community. I, I mean, they could say that all they want. Bro. They drive property but when, value the, up. but when a project that works with schools that no one takes a penny, no one. None of no us. No one helps paid. them with money. No either. one gets. It's always yeah. fucking is struggling, bro. I can't yeah. believe. I mean, it's, it, we have a couple local. Like, there's Marivi and Darius. Oh, of course, Marivi bro. and Darius. You know, this Marivi is the guy that helped me with my heart surgery. They, they they're just show, fucking angels, dog. Like throwing wow. money at. Like, they saw what it did for the school. They're like, they just want to help. Like, we, I had a couple of friends like that that were just angels, man. And yeah, they, but they they're not, it's not back. an entity. It's not a governmental thing. It's none of these investors and we but definitely not. No, they get nothing out of it. You know what I mean? Nothing. It's like nobody's helping for this and this is the most epic shit ever, you know? And they, uh, I was telling you that Patrick Walsh worked for the Winwood Artistic Association at the time. He was also working for the Goldmans at the time. I, I don't know what their, their, I don't know what he was doing for them, but I know he was working for them. So when we started, I went door to door and we were asking people, hey, can you give anything so that we can make this happen? You guys have all created a business here over what the artists have created here. So now it's kind of time to give back. And in a way where no one's going to get paid, you're helping the school that's in this community. The, the people that live here, two blocks from your store, that's the school they're going to. So I'm asking you for a modest um, donation. Yeah. So some gave 500 Actually, the majority gave $500. The only one who gave me more money was Robert Fontaine. He gave me $5,000. It was the only one that gave me a ridiculous amount of money. At the time, to me, was shit. That was wow. incredible. And then um, because he worked for them, Patrick went and asked the Goldmans, whoever it was that he spoke to at the time, can we... You know, would you mind donating? Because this is what we're doing for the community that you've 100% profited off of. They said, no, it's a conflict of interest to us. Oh, yeah. So don't tell me you're creating this for us, for the artists, when really there's just, you know, it's for you and for your property so you can elevate it and sell it. Don't say it's for the community when you say that one of the only projects at the time, if the only project at the time that actually worked with the community that... 100% of every sweat, every penny, everything went to that school in that community. 
you're calling it a conflict of interest because we're painting murals at a school and you have a couple walls in your, on your property. That's crazy. They have Shepherd yeah. Fairy, that is Space crazy. Invader, Futura, uh, Basque. They had all these massive names. You're scared of the sc- I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm, I don't want to start throwing. But I feel like what happened to Winwood is like the typical like American, like greedy capitalist situation, you know? It is. But at the same time, compared to what it was before, again, the first 48 hour episodes are are featured in Winwood for murders. There's there's like like diseased prostitution. It's like it's it's bad things that there there was no regulation. There's no nothing. It's it's just what happens in bad neighborhoods was happening there. To what it is now, it is a massive turnaround that was created solely because of what artists did there. If you had to give me, and I'm gonna ask you the same question too, and you know, I'll go with you first. Brother, like the top five Winwood artist that really like changed the landscape and actually like affected the community in a good way. Who would you look at? Primary Flight. Primary Flight. It was it wasn't a top five anything. It was them. That's Primary it. Flight bringing in, bringing in Retina. Do you know Retina? You know the big Winwood Loft building, the one with all the red letters and yeah. kind of that. That was that year. He must have painted, but I, but I can remember five six murals that were like the size of God knows what. Oh, the biggest walls in Winwood was was Retina. And then he was incredibly influential because it was his very it was something we had never seen for before. Sure different. Right? So it was this massive. Big. Well, what's Winwood lost? Five stories tall? I think wow. More. Which in Miami yeah. it might as well be the Empire State Building. Yeah. Because it was so, nothing else bigger back then. Wow. Nothing. It was huge. So it's like that was, but it was it was those guys. It was the local, and these are artists, by the way. This books is an artist. Christina's an artist. Typo also he painted stuff, but like Typo, they, they were still very much more reserved because they saw what bringing all these artists from all over the world to Miami would do to this. They couldn't just be doing it because they were fans of it. They were they were artists themselves. They're graffiti yeah, artists. Breaking so like your but like your they homies, saw it. but they're also your stars. Yeah, they yeah, saw yeah. It. And you can share with them and paint with them and learn with them and share stories and then create an opportunity for yeah. you to go to their country and be welcome and be helped to paint. It was incredible. You know, it, this, and again, this is, look, I, I, I'm not one to tell anyone what to do with their buildings because if you owned your building, hey, more power to you. That's fine. My problem is when you start spewing bullshit as to why you're doing what you're doing, when it, the, what's what's clear is, no, you're doing it. Because, yeah, your actions are saying yeah, something else. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Just walk around, like, just to give you, <laughs> Space Invader, just to give you an example, is an artist that, that is a young, mid, I guess, 40s, 50s, wherever, wherever his age is now. I think you can find that somewhere. Um, the man is selling pieces in auction for seven figures, right? He was already big. He's the one that they, makes, you to explain the, it. The little tiles. He's the one that makes the little uh, Space Invaders video game. Yeah. Tiles with the tiles yeah. that puts them everywhere. That's a guy from France. In 2010, he created where, you know where Joey's is in Winwood? Yeah. Okay, you know Winwood Walls and Joey's. And right in the middle is like that, that shop. That they have. Well, it's not even a shop anymore. Now it's like a, it's an entrance. It's an entrance to yeah. Winwood Walk, right? the welcome center. Before it was that, it was a shop. It was a boutique. Yeah. They blew up. <laughs> they blew up like they destroyed a invader piece that was maybe the size of yeah, like two four, of these paints, sixteen by eight, about to open a boutique. What preservers or whatever of art blows up? an artist that comes from fucking France to do this for you. And in a time where it wasn't even that huge back then to throw it, just to put a window for a boutique. Like you don't think that brings a good question. Is there anybody who makes the decisions about blowing up an art? Is it the building owner or is it like, or is the building owner? Again, I don't, I don't care that they did it. No, but my question is this. If you go to Miami beach, there's strict laws on what you can and cannot do. They're trying do. to do that what in Winwood. We don't have Art it. Deco style. By the time they do it, it's going to be too late. They're trying to do that now. Yeah, Coral Gable is the same thing. This the, this cannot well, go Coral away Gable's from that. Coral Gable is protected because the code has been working for so many years. And that's why it looks the way it looks. It's preserved. It's Correct. nice. Correct. Anything that is new is well done. It's up to some kind of criteria. Correct. That matches. We don't have that. By so Winwood doesn't have that. No. And by the time they realize that, all the, all the walls will be changed by windows. Yeah. Might as well just call the window wood. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I you know again, it's like I, I'm not I, 
hotels being built in Wynwood, restaurants coming to Wynwood. That doesn't bother me. It's it's that brings tourism, that brings people to experience what we've been experiencing for over a decade yeah. now, a decade yeah. and a half. That's fine. It's I, I, it's the it's the pushing out the reason. And I don't mean work with every single artist. Look, listen, you could listen to 5,000 songs and think 50 are good. Yeah. That's just how it is. We, know, we There are more shit bands out there now because we hear them now. Yeah. They existed 50 years ago. We just didn't have the means. access to listen to a song that just completed two minutes ago. It's now been listened to 500 million times. Yeah. It's a, it, nothing's changed. You just have more people. So there's a bigger, you know. But do you feel that Wynwood? I mean, I used to love going there every weekend, and now I feel like it's a tourist trap. Yeah, it's weird. You know, like I barely go trap. anymore. We, it was a tourist trap then also. The difference is you're going into a museum that was free, and I don't mean just Wynwood Walls that now charge money for people to go in there. Again, their prerogative. Yeah, that's not a problem. But people were going to Wynwood to see, oh, this guy just painted a new mural. Oh, there's people painting right now. Let's go check it out. Bar, our Basel's always been a blast, right? It's been a great time for a long time now. The best time for our Basel was the two weeks leading up to it because you could see all these Hell guys yeah. painting. Best you can go ever. and see. It's like going to spring training and seeing all your favorite baseball players playing, sitting on the, on the sideline. You can meet them. You can shake their hands. You can hang out. They'll Whoa. do a little sketch for you. To now it's become this thing where th- this is my problem. They don't care enough to go to Goldman and say, what's your rate? Okay, you know what? I'm respect you. You're the artist that I wanted to speak to. I'm going to pay you your rate. They'll be like, how much are you charging? Okay, no, I'm going to go and up. I'm going to put a call to artists so that a bunch of these starving artists that can't get their mother's attention to look at their painting, now all of a sudden they're going to do a wall because they're undercutting his price. So then, so then, They'll go and they'll go from this artist that they like. They sought them out. How much do you pay? Oh, no, I'm not going to pay you that. I'm going to find someone that will do it for free because we can use this. But they do spend 25 bucks an hour, uh, 25 bucks of food on carpet, 45 bucks of food on granite for their decoration, Yeah, 150 orders of food by like this finish on the drywall. But they don't pay 15 bucks of food for a mural, 30 bucks of food for a mural. Wow. So it's, it's like everything is like fucked up like what? about the sorry about the hotels and shit i just saw the other day this a friend of us sends us the video she was at the city right and uh at a hearing for this new project the winwood hotel the winwood hotel and the and the, the renderings and the drawings they do not have walls anymore it's a structure like that wood led thing so on the two ground levels there's not even a wall to paint but they took our name. They called themselves the Wynwood Hotel. And you look at this drawing, it's not one space for art. And that's the problem. Yeah. Everybody's benefiting and sucking on this name that we created, but nobody's really taking care of what they should. Yeah. Nobody's approaching him and says, Robert, help me. I'm going to build uh, the Wynwood Hotel, and we want to have the most amount of art in this shit. Help me with your knowledge. To bring the right people because what's happening now is like okay let's say we managed to figure it out that there is a problem what they do it and then now but the, what they do is they bring their architects to create safe art the art cannot be safe um 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 the art needs to be needs free to, needs to tell a story yeah. needs to be a background needs to, the artist needs to have a story to tell. The artist needs to have a trajectory that you can reach and follow and understand. They're using the only spaces we have, they're limited. They're putting safe art. Colors, lines, palm trees, things that everybody thinks is okay. And it looks nice because it's colorful. But that then that's also missing the point. You're not leaving enough walls and the ones they have, they're curating it with safe art. You know, Miki Rock. we was talking to her the other day, She's an amazing uh, artist, a uh, uh, legendary. She was. We were talking to this other dude that were in, in an event, and she says the problem is that the art is safe, can't be safe. The artists need to do the art. They need to tell the story. Now, that's do, also part of do, the But do you think you that you live, breathe, and every day? Do you think there's a way to like fix this, right this ship? Like, do you think there's any uh, way to go uh, back to where we were? Yes, but it needs to be taken care. 
at this moment. Nothing's gone until it's completely gone. Yeah. Correct. Nothing. It, so it's, yes, it's, it's there. There's still walls. There's still artists. People are still coming every year. Our Basel still happens. Our Miami still happens. It's still a thing there. People still go to Winwoods Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights because there's art happening. All of that stuff is great. It's it's the um, it's the way it's shifted from man. This was like this free canvas of just constant creatives coming and. You know, I'm not saying it's anarchy. It wasn't anarchy. Anarchy was what it was before when it was just graffiti. That's graffiti is anarchy, right? Yeah. Graffiti artists, they don't even. I mean, they go to Winwood because it exists, but they're doing their thing somewhere else. Where, regardless, they do it here. They're gonna do it somewhere else, yeah. no matter what. But it's like there's this. There was this like freedom of, of, of. Yeah, you come here, you express. This is where you show your craziest, wildest thing. Yeah. That's gone. Now you got to be limited to what's acceptable. You know, you, there's no, like, people will come here, they, they will think of an idea and wait the whole year to come and do it here. The craziest, the wildest. We don't have that shit no more. Build this like the Dorsey. Yesterday before I, yesterday in the morning, I drove around to see before I came to this meeting. And I'm like, build this like the Dorsey. They knocked down probably 50, 60 good walls. Wow. There is not one wall in that motherfucking building. And then they have on the third floor, they have this massive murals, like maybe 500 feet by 150 feet with lights. And this, it means nothing. It's just like this shape. And they, I'm sure that it cost them like $300,000. They should have invested that at the ground level. The art needs to be at the ground level. And it needs to tell a story. These fucking people wasted all this money, knocked all these walls out. And now they don't even have parking for the own tenants. I think that shit is half empty. So they're ruining it for nothing. They're not even benefiting like they thought they will. You yeah, know? Do you still get calls to go and paint walls in Winwood? Like, are, are you still getting like requests and stuff? Or? I, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky, but I'm, like Robert says, I'm different. Like, I'm a hustler and I'm there every day. So I do paint a lot of shit. Like, actually, from now, I'm going to go do a mural. Like, I do maybe 10, 50 murals a month in Winwood, but it's because I'm a hustler by nature. It's not because people is I'm creating the opportunity of gotcha. being there and, and being a, a, an advocate on this thing and having a style that is versatile because I'm not painting my art. I'm painting what they want. I just need to the money to raise my family, and I do it. Yeah, my next question was that. Do you ever have a situation where... People try to fit you into a box and paint something that you every don't want. Fucking, every time. Oh, wow. They How do you want, handle that? I do raise it. raise the price. That's it. That's that's not a problem. If I were to ask you right now, if if I were to ask you, name me three of the most famous American paintings of all time. Anyone who knows history of that is one of those three is going to be the Andy Warhol soup can. That wasn't his fucking design. He didn't paint something brand new. He painted a soup can that had already existed. Yeah, and that's the that it was. It showed in my it, for to me Andy Warhol showed how obsessed we were with icons, with iconography, with celebrity, with all of that. But it wasn't like he created out of his head like a brand new character that he could come up with. Yeah. Or, not that he couldn't, but that's not what he did. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how he got paid for it. I don't know what he did for. I don't know if he did it for camp. I don't know what he did. But my point is, he painted something that already existed. So, let's say today, Bex, for example. Bex, in 2015, had approached me to do a mural festival. Not a mural festival. They wanted The, the idea Bex was, beer. Bex Beer, wanted to do a project where, I, for three months I was working on this. I had set up a tour around the country. The East Coast mostly, Miami, New York, Baltimore, I believe Nashville was one, Atlanta was another, to bring artists from Miami and pair them up with artists from those cities. Spend a week, do murals, a whole tour. Then, at the last minute, they're like, listen, Miami is our focus. We want to change this. Just pick. We want to do up to 15 murals. I'm like, fuck, I have how long to do this? Two weeks. So after three months of working on this tour, we ended up doing, I go, fine, that's fine. But I'm going to write the contracts for how this is going to work for the artist. I'm going to have one of the attorneys that we work with is going to put this together. You're not going to tell the artist what to make. You're not going to put your sign on the wall. And you can never use these images anywhere outside of what we're doing now. So for the next two weeks, the Bex Urban Canvas was the name of that project. 
You could promote them. You could put the piece on them. You could even say that you helped make it happen because that's the truth. Bex came in and said, we're going to let artists do what they do, and we're going to promote that. To give them credit, they fucking did that. The artists, are, they had everything transparent to them. This is how much you're going to get paid. This is what's going to happen in social media, blah, 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 blah. Fine. No problem. It was great. We had a lot of local artists do it. It was all local artists do it. Um, they, some did a couple did a numerous murals. Like It was Little Havana, Little Haiti, Hialeah, and Wynwood, and South Miami were the five areas where we did this project. And then it, it was wonderful. No backside. You would never guess why that mural was on that wall. Those kinds of collaborations Got you. are it's fucking great. I would rather have gold and paint a, a sign than to have, you know, a robotic printer make it. Yeah. Because that's what it is. You go to old school West Towns. What are you staring at when you look at a brick building? Holy shit, look at that 1920s Coca-Cola. Correct, 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 correct. That's cool. I yeah. like that. That's a very cool thing. Like, work with them. But then, you know, we put Beck's Urban Canvas there numbers shot up in Miami when that happened shot up what happens the next year they completely they push me out on the side and they get somebody to just be yes people and now instead of painting murals all, all over the city and all over the place to you know push artists to to say you know we encourage artists now it's a party with a canvas with a super massive Beck sign in the middle, and then those people paint all over it. That was obviously Fucking not Bex. That was the whatever artist. company was 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 doing their marketing at the time. And then that was the last year of the of that little festival because no one gave a shit. No one. Yeah, there's no great artists did it. The point. Yeah, yeah. friends of mine did it, and you know people that needed money. That's fine, but that it's an example of here's something so good. Here's a blueprint of how we can continue to do this. The party was excellent. Again, Beckspear shot through the roof. But because I guess certain people wanted more money to put in their pockets, they didn't want to pay for something good. Yeah. You know? They, they, something really, something else that's completely off. But it, this is what bothered me about the whole of these local real estate developers entities saying that they do this for the community, for themselves. The Miami Dolphins, have you gone to the stadium in the last few years? Yeah, yeah. Games, right? You've seen all those mirrors out of there? Yeah. When that first happened, do you know how many local Miami artists? Miami, the hometown place of fucking... Every single year, artists are coming here. There are tons of artists that live here. You know how many artists painted that stadium that first uh, year? Nah. Zero. Miami artists. I'm sorry. One did. Abstract. And he painted the Hard Rock logo for the helipad. So all these other artists from all over the world, for the Miami Dolphins, our local team painted stuff at their stadium. Again, friends of mine did that, and they did great jobs. I'm not talking about them. They don't control that shit. Yeah. It's the people that run it, but they didn't use one local artist. That's crazy. So tell me, where's the local love? Where, is the, what, where are you doing this for the people of Miami? Where, eat, no. But why do you think that happens? You know, Why do they go? Because people see money, and that's all they care about. That's it. A friend of mine came into Wynwood. He was paying, I think it was $1,500 a month in rent. In 2010, 2011. Right across the street from Patrick. Amazing little picture. Within five years, I think it went up to 7000 And even then, he was like, fuck, I can't. I have to move to South Beach. The guy opened the gallery in South Beach because Wynwood got too expensive. Then he ended up telling me I should have taken that deal because that was still a good number that I could still cover while in Wynwood. I think it was more of, oh, you're going for 1500 Yeah, the shock. What is that shit? I don't even know what – this is almost 10 years ago now. I don't know what that shit goes for now. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to tell you. Bucks yeah. When I, when, when, before I, told, I was telling you earlier, before I moved the office to um, Doral, right, we were on 36th Street. And like 17th Avenue, uh, the the agency started on top of a dealership, yeah. right? It was a, you know, people would you see homeless people. I would be embarrassed of clients coming to me. My thought process: this was like uh, 2016, 17. I wanted to move to Wynwood, and when I was looking at rent and everything in Wynwood, I was like, "This is impossible. I won't be able to survive, man." And then that's why I ended up moving to Doral. And at that time, they wanted to create like where you did the mural. 
supposedly in that area they wanted to create like an art district in the yeah, route yeah right. which collapsed nobody never gets really happened. the right a, a person to uh, assessor no? and anything. what i'm hearing now is that coral gables years ago decades ago was like the epicenter for like art galleries at one point 100%. yeah and they want to bring uncle, that that's back how i got into art he was one of the artists in the 80s that came from cuba and started doing great in you know Havana and coral gables coral gables was the art hub then you know, and shit changes. Things move on, but the Coral Gables, what it is now, is this beautiful, you know, a lot of high money, all yeah. that stuff. Think about Winwood. It, 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 it was, it, it was something that didn't the exist. Works was amazing. In it was, it was so, it was so much. It was so much. Like Coral Gables still wasn't. There wasn't toe to toe to toe art that it was impossible to get rid of. Winwood became that. Yeah, it we was went. impossible to get rid of because it was so much. You're talking about from 28th to 29th and then Northeast 2nd to Northwest 5th. That is a lot of coverage yeah. where if you're standing still long enough, someone's going to paint your face. Yeah. I mean, it was it non was crazy. The pipes, the awnings, the signs, the floor, the street. It was, it was impossible to get rid of it. And yet, little yeah. by little, they're dying to make that happen or at least control it so much where it just gets rid of this 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 amazing thing that was created for them. Look, man, if 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 I own this building that I purchased because I saw something, and then again I'm I'm speaking in hypotheticals because who the fuck knows this is not reality. Reality yeah. is real life. This is me in my head. But it, you would think that people would be gracious and they would be grateful for what these artists did for them. Hi, we just did all this for you and your buildings. Why don't you not kick us out? Yeah. Why don't you, no, you know, make us part of it? Yeah, make a part make of it. it. Keep making it dope. Hialeah, perfect example. You know the Hialeah Arts District? Yeah. Okay. I was involved with the curation of that in the beginning. I was supposed to be involved. When I started asking questions, and I started these, I was told that the developers there were going to build art studios, art spaces. This is going to be what Winwood has lost. Winwood's kicking out artists, no problem. I spoke to those developers on my own after they're like, I don't know who's telling you that shit, but none of that's going to happen. And we don't have a budget to pay none of this stuff. And no, these are our buildings and we're going to sell them and we're trying to use art. They would tell me, thinking that I wasn't going to give a shit, we are going to use what the artists bring here so that we can elevate our prices and sell. And ciao. Do you see anything going on in, in mm -hmm. Hialeah Arts District anymore? Maybe a once in a while thing. But because it went that route and they didn't do what they were supposed to, no one gives a shit anymore. Yeah. No one cares. It could have been something great. It was an awesome little area. But because I'm an asshole and I ask these questions and I get angry when, when people you lie speak to me with about passion. Shit. I like that you speak with <laughs> yeah. passion. They kick me out. They flat out kick me out. Don't forget, all right, bro, it, it is what you it know, is. There is no more... Artist studios in Winwood. There's no artists in Winwood. I think me and a couple more. But that we're hustlers and we manage. I've been kicked out of three spaces because they raise my rent every month. Wow. So, which is totally fine. I understand what's happening. But the problem is like, how do you call yourself the art hub of the world of, of America? The biggest uh, art scene, street art scene. And you, there are no galleries. They can't afford that. There's no galleries, there's no art studios, and there are no businesses that cater for the arts to gather and keep creating. If you have the artists there, you have the energy, the soul that made that place, but they're not there. They can't afford to paint there. They they don't have any walls to paint at. They don't have any support from anybody to provide some sort of help to keep going. How do you think the art is going to stay? That's, we used to have the what it's was crazy. It? art art uh, second Saturdays. Of yeah, the yeah, the yeah. artworks. That was Our incredible. Man. Every single month, a There's brand like at new least show. Eighty new galleries. Yeah, no I would walk guy. in and they give you the free cheap wine. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember crazy. those days, man. You'd park There's there. No you galleries. You feel like your car's gonna get broken bro. into and stuff, and you're gonna go out and drink cheap wine. <laughs> no galleries. But it was fucking awesome, bro. Brand new shows, brand new. Like walk into these little places, you find this crazy art that you never seen. It was mind blowing. That is gone. It was so like the other, sorry. The other yeah. day, somebody asked me after the the other interview. Um, I have like a great feedback. People asking me, and a lot of people contact me. And somebody asked me like, "What would you do if you want to do one of these buildings?" I'm like, "It's simple. I will do 
a section of Thorfrons, because I understand that this needs to make money. I would do the wall in between to create a link between the art and the business and keep having art that rotates constantly and keep the place blooming with new art. But I will also, out of all these 500 units, I will have on the ground level a small section of it that I have affordable or, 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 or artist spaces that they can stay, yeah. that they can create the art. Like if you have a thousand units, take five and make them into art studios so local artists can have a place where create, residence have house. residence. You need to have a residence. It's not even one residence in Wingo wow. anymore. It's crazy. So how do you expect these artists to come for free to this city and bring their art and, and they, have a, they don't even have the most basic support. Yeah. So like if I was one of the developers, I would choose a smart design that keeps the biggest amount of art accessible. The art needs to be in the ground. Cannot be in the second floor, third floor. That doesn't benefit us. Yeah, you had told me before. Them. Yeah. So we need to have art in the ground and we need to have uh, accessible studios for them to come back and per constantly create art and bring the energy again to this place before it's too late. Yeah, if I That's was I if do. I was a developer, I would pick up my fucking phone and or send a DM to you or to Robert and figure this out because I don't think that this, it's not it's, it's so not a, simple. It's not like, a hard fix, you know. Oh my god, as a as, as not as a, they don't treat it as a as a necessity. They treat it as they still look at our school system. They disregard art like if it's nothing. If it, like if activating these children's imaginations is such a horrible fucking thing and it's not necessary. They treat art as a as a as a whatever. Like a byproduct. What I do enjoy what's happened in Wynwood is the culinary side of it because the culinary world is also has its own art to it. That I mean, to become a real chef, to become a real barista, to become that's that's an art. That yeah. is another art form that's blown up. We have Michelin rated restaurants in Wynwood right now. Yeah. Thankfully. That has I was progressed. putting today two signs up at Michelin stars, Adoya and Whitwood. So wow. that's, that's an great. awesome thing that's happened there. That, but that obviously, you know, it's not. I, I don't know. That, that's that's but, a, that's, not, a but, but that's, a, that's a that's a great. But they don't treat vis the visual art as the same, way. the same necessity, which is the reason anyone gives a fuck about Whitwood to begin with. <laughs> it's true. It's that. It's that simple. Whoever denies. That artwork is the only reason anyone gives a shit about Winwood worldwide is fucking a denial or is a fucking asshole. And yeah. they're lying to you on purpose. Or both. Because that's, that's <laughs> the hey, but, like, going, but segueing into, I have a couple questions, but segueing into the culinary, which, you know, everyone's is big. Do you have like a top three restaurants in Winwood? Absolutely. Let me know, bro. Let me know. My favorite fucking Peruvian place. Manta. Manta, shout out. They're actually a client of ours, I and you have your it. art on them, and they're great yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, but not, not because I have my art. Really, it's not because I have my art. It's because... They're good. They're tranquilos. No it's really. just like, since the, the first day when they came here, I, I, I approached them, and they're like, yo, like, we don't understand none of this shit. You tell me what to do. We want to be part of this. The first day, he called me a check. This guy, I've never seen him before in my life. Called me a check. Andres. Hey, Andres. And he's like, paint. They have two big walls. One got covered by this fucking new building and it disappeared. And then they have the top part of it. Yeah. That it needs to be shared with the sign. Yeah. He's like, paint whatever you think we need in here. And I'm like, you need to paint. I'm gonna do my art throughout. And then you need to you need to let people paint the walls inside. He Go did. inside. The so they did the the right thing. They're like, teach me how to become part of it. Even they already have an architectural drawing and a plan. It was manufactured. They became part of it as much as they could. So shout out to Manta. They are. The food is my favorite. Yeah. My other favorite restaurant. Number two. Number two. It's, they're both number ones because I love both. Mm -hmm. It's Doya. It's a mesa, it's a mesa bar a restaurant. And it's, um, the chef is amazing. And the, the, the two partners are amazing. They did the same thing. They hired me before they start. And they're like, yo, please put art throughout my whole stuff. So they give you anyway, freedom of creativity. Yeah, in a check. Like, whatever you want, how much it is here, help us. We want to be part of this. Bring your art inside. Actually, yesterday, the chef called me, which is my favorite chef. He called me. He's like, yo, I want I want you to paint something in my oven. Like, paint my oven. Like, wow, I want to that's badass. And, and they have this in they those old school incredible, that's badass. This incredible yeah. oven. He's like, paint the oven. Do something. Like, bring your art in here. And then they cut me checks. They're amazing, you know? So 
That's the right thing, and that's why they're successful. But not because they did that. Is that I love the food. The food is really yeah. good. Manta and Doya, and then number three. But that one is fucking the, the pizza by the slice, Joe's Pizza. They just opened from New York. You know, you stop by. What's the name? Joe's Pizza. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Joe's Pizza. It's not Joe's. It's the one from New York. The one from New York. Yeah. Joe's Pizza. Joe's Pizza. Bro, you stop there, ten bucks, you get two delicious you slices. You can't eat that. And it's always done. You walk out and you sit down and watch people walk by. And that's my. Some of those places do it right, and it's yeah. been it's been for like Doctor Smooth, that coffee shop that yeah. was on Twenty Second. Before they even opened, they had reached out and said, listen, we want to hire a local artist to do a mural on the side. Uh, we are open to uh, freedom, like freedom of expression, but we we would also like a collaboration. So, you know, we connected them, and Jose Mertz ended up doing that wall. It's still writing right now, but it was a wall that they had asked him. Yeah, it's moved, so, no? yeah. yeah, yeah he it's said, beautiful. they said, he, he, he said, he told them, I can do whatever I want for this much. Or it's gonna, or you know, it's gonna be a little bit more if you want some. Yeah, you want to control input. input. Yeah. They said we'll pay you more because we want this to be a collaboration. Like there was no bartering. There was no. Yeah. They said, listen, you're a, you're an accomplished artist. You've done great things for brands, and before you've done your own thing. We want you to do your thing, and ended up being. It's one of the longest running murals in Winwood right now. It's been yeah. this since 2017. And, this, and the business no, has been very successful. Too. Yeah. It's been so good. It it's moved and it's been it's done it's done really good. What's what's like? I have two questions, uh, and which one whoever can answer. What is like an average cost for people who don't know for a a, a good artist and well known artist an average cost to do a mural? You know, that's so. I know I'll, it's. I'll let I'll, I'll let uh, you know. Obviously, you have as a personal. You know what you do. Well, from what I've experienced as a middleman and friends telling me, it's it's changes. It's different because you have certain artists that. I mean, if you, prefer, if you, Ferry, if you prefer not Shepherd to answer, Ferry, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. Well, no, 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 it, no, there, no there's, like, there's no number. It's like yeah. how how much are you paying uh, Little Wayne to do a show, or how much are you paying a uh, rapper from the corner to do a show? You're not paying them the same thing, even though yeah, of course. they're doing the same amount of time. They're gonna pay the same venue. No, but I, I want You're like not. a top artist, right? If I want to get like a good artist to do a mural at my, on the side of my business, some I know, I know an artist got, that gets paid six figures to do walls. Oh, wow. yeah, that's good because of the team, because of the size of the wall. And I know other artists that'll do a wall for five thousand because it's you know it's a smaller wall and it's something that does it. it it's more about what the time is, and you know the, a lot of artists will will will. Um, They'll quote a wall based on square footage. So, gotcha. like, well, I'll charge if it's a massive wall, maybe anywhere between fifteen and eighteen dollars a square foot, or a little wall, you're gonna charge fifty dollars a square foot. Gotcha. Like, who knows? Gotcha. It, that makes sense. It, it really it, it depends, man. It depends on on who it is. It's but still cheaper than putting a, a, a windows an expensive tile and yeah. windows on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for the people that is developing these buildings, it makes sense to have the art. Also, the other day I was thinking like, okay, all these structures and things they're building, it requires a lot of maintenance. Yeah. And now they have to deal with graffiti because now graffiti writers are tagging everything because it's, yeah. it's taking over their space, yeah. right? So now they have to maintenance and keep people and teams to clean up all this. But if you hire all these artists to do the art, it's going to be respected. You're going to have you even going to have less. You're going to have a cheaper investment on the initial thing, and then you're going to have less money in maintenance if you do it right. If you get advice by the right people, a lot to bring of, the right artists into your space. You know? A lot of the artists are friends with the graffiti artists. So they're not going to have their shit fucked with. Yeah, and again. The the graffiti artists that have been doing this for forever, like the, the the ones that wake up and only think about buying a spray can so they can paint somewhere, they don't have to paint in Wynwood. They decide that we'll go somewhere else. Correct. If Wynwood's, you know, a mural thing, that's fine. That's not my thing. I'm going to go paint. But, you know, if artists A through Z are friends of theirs, they're not going to fuck with them because it's their wall. They know that you're messing with their money. Yeah. And if those artists promise... The, the 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 building or the restaurant or whatever, hey, no one's going to fuck with my shit because, you know, people like me and I don't fuck with anybody. Plus, they, they enjoy it, too. And Rob, you, you having you, a person like Robert and me help you uh, um, curate your space also means we're going to bring those graffiti artists, too. Yeah. We're going to have three artists. We're going to have graffiti artists. We're going to create a dope space that you can even understand. So those graffiti artists, 
they need to be part of it. I think graffiti is a thermometer that keeps everything on check. Wow. Think about it. When your shed is whack and what you're building is 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 commercial or is not nothing important for them it has no importance. They're right, paying right over. But if you bring the right art or the right artist with the right trajectory, they'll respect that. So they graffiti needs to be part of this equation full time because they are the real energy that made all this shit happen. They like they like to keep the checks and balances. Absolutely. But wow. by nature, I didn't think about that. But that's just, true. Just this. 14 year old kid with a five dollar can can fuck this eighty thousand dollar mural in five seconds. There's no way nobody can stop him, just because he thinks it's not cool. Yeah, and that's his opinion, and he is a curator of this uh, city. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I think graffiti needs to be part of all this constantly because it's what is the real. The real energy of the whole bullshit. Well, most of these graffiti artists are also artists. Absolutely, you don't know what their graffiti site is. Correct. But there, I have a friend of mine who does complete sets for Hollywood productions. His job is to paint what the fuck ever they ask him to. He's done paintings, canvases that featured in the show. Uh, he'll do neighborhoods where he'll paint the whole set as graffiti. He'll paint his friends' names, all that stuff, because they can't. Uh, I can't make a film a movie, showcase his work, and not tell him. He Correct. can sue my ass. Gotcha. So what they do is they'll hire an artist to do that. Now they'll do you know random yeah, words random or whatever. Name like Lolo. This person, but with a cool fresh style. Gotcha. Does incredible canvas, beautiful canvas work. You'll never put the two together. His friends know, people who know him know, but you won't know that he's also the guy that's painting. You know, eat a dick. On a wall that you see in the background of the new NYPD Blue show, and and, and and you're the lookout you know? for most of these graffiti well, artists. I don't need lookout because they have, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, you're it's, not a really graffiti writer. If no, your I'm first not, graffiti, no, no, you in oh, general. Yeah. If your first graffiti was not a dick, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with, with the veins. Oh, yeah, it's like real. so epic to write that shit and write. Yeah, this huge thing. You've never this, done graffiti. You've never like gone with a I, can. I, I can't paint for shit. I I was never. It's like I. I love, I don't know shit about reading music, but I could hum every note of so many albums for you that it's, I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of what these people but do. But we need people like him. Yeah. He is the actual link between us and the real the rest world. Of the world. Yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah. The like, artists should Robert have needs people to be, yeah. helping them yeah. because they need to be creating. A lot of artists, they, they get very... Um, Emotional art is an emotional thing. So when they're talking to a business person and the business person tells them things that they don't really like, they'll get emotional and they'll walk away. Yeah, yeah. They need people to help them because so so that they can continue to create. Again, this guy's an anomaly where he'll do all of it together, but he, you know, it, it, not that it's because people I'm can't bored. do that. <laughs> well, actually, in, in, not. In, no, in the comments, <laughs> <laughs> everyone was saying this motherfucker's not poor, bro. Right? Well, well, listen, like, what are they talking I, about? I've never lived in his house. I've never gone to his house. When, when I, I become know. famous, I'm gonna walk into places with two people carrying me. Yeah. Like, here comes Golden, like with a suit made with sardines. <laughs> Like, like gold. Right now I'm broke, so I gotta do everything. I'm gonna get out of here. The reception is fucking. You see, you see how it is that the public are so blind. To the reality of what it is, that they'll think that if you're a known artist or you've created everywhere, you've got all these millions. That's not a bad thing because it does it, it does it makes sure it makes the young people aspire to something yeah. at least, I think, too. Absolutely, which is another reason why we started doing these projects yeah. in the schools. The first time a kid ever graduated Jose de Diego to go to art schools was After the, the first class that was there. When they were in sixth grade, when we did the project, that's amazing. It's incredible. You know, that's like amazing. now kids are get. They remember I told you no art, no nothing. They now have three full time art classes, two art teachers and a and a um, magnet art class. Wow. They have a robotics class. They have a class where the kids, you know, those those battle robotics yeah, yeah, classes. Yeah. They have that kind of class now. They have sports now. They have music now. They have all these things they didn't have before. Why? Because the kids started, they were able to recruit more kids. Like, again, I told you, they went to full capacity after, after a few years. It was so loved there that the same superintendent that paid no fucking attention to us back then, except for one photo, uh, photo op that he did, 
The next year after we did the project, he moved his Teachers for America program to the third floor of that school. It was now such a great spot that they did that. You know that church, Vu Church? Yeah, yeah. It's who huge. go around, try to act like they're, you know, this this uh, poor, whatever. The guy's father's worth tens of millions of dollars. Looking all over the city for their venue. What venue did they fucking choose? The That's venue cool. at Jose de Diego. They used to run Vu Church out of that hall, at, out of their... Um, Whatever, their you assembly know? hall. Yeah. Because of that project. Wow. Plain and simple. They'll tell you whatever the fuck they want to tell you. But what a coincidence that now all of a sudden, after looking for all these places, yeah, you I end up see, here. I don't see them there like Please. eight years ago. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, so like, be safe. and, and, and <laughs> not, not a, nothing against people who believe. And yeah, like, no, hey, that's that. their, it's I'm, I'm just giving you that, that example. It's like, now all of a sudden, this attention, it's happening again. It happened with Winwood. All the artwork is bringing in all this money, and they get kicked out. And at least in the school, the principals are have more balls. And they're like, no, we're going to keep this and we're going to keep this happening. And it's going to look great. And Voo Church wants to come here on Sunday, Saturdays, whatever. No problem. Worship. Do your thing. But it was because of that. You know? So but it, you said it's, it's happening again where? In the school. Oh, gotcha. So like, Winwood, art brought attention. School, art brought attention. attention. Got gotcha. you. It's... We're not giving you a fucking idea. This is a blueprint. Yeah. This is how it is done. End of story. Winwood Life. You know that festival, Winwood Life? Yeah. Do you know why it got big? Because Tony and Javi at the time reached out to me, reached out to a couple curators and said, listen, I understand what art means to this neighborhood. What can we do to make this festival as pure and as art as, as artistic as possible. And those first few years before they really blew up and now they have, you know, the deck and all that stuff. Because Javi and Tony are friends of mine and they're not working together now, but they 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 were able to they they whenever I gave them a price, they paid the price. Yeah. Whenever I told them how much, how much space, sell it for this, they never charged artists to sell their artwork. Every penny that was sold, whether you sold something or not. You kept a hundred percent of it. Yeah, they were able. Like t Tony went to live and loud. Or yeah, he did live and loud. And yeah, and Tony stayed. retired at the right time, yeah. right before COVID. And I mean, he's he's a dad. He he's wants doing to a great spend, job, though. He's amazing. Doing, he Tony job. Tony's yeah. an amazing human being. Tony and Abby both are. I I I, I think they're 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 good. Listen, people. out to, to to finalize, I have a question for I guess both of you, and I'm interested to see how both of you guys respond to it. But if I had to ask you, what does Winwood mean to you? Like, what does it mean to you, you know, at this point? It, it's always going to be, to me, the, the greatest outdoor museum that ever existed. And the world, the entire world wanted to copy it. And a lot of places tried and a lot of places, you know, succeeded. Denver almost succeeded. Then they changed uh, the people who were running those festivals and it went to shit. You know, when you, when you move on from what makes you a success and you do it out of greed... You're fucking up. It's it's that simple. You're fucking up. Why would you take a project that looks that's working so well? Yeah, you might not get to a million in five years, but you'll get there in ten if you keep keep at it. Like keep doing it. Pay your artists. Keep people happy. You know, like this is why they're here. So keep it going. Like again, people who own buildings, people who own property, people who own developments, you have to understand. They're going to do what they do because they have a business. They have people to pay. They have bottom lines. They have all that shit. But why cut out what made you popular to begin with so that you could cut corners and it looks like shit? Like this wasn't something. This was, an, this was different. This was something that can, it, it, it can still happen because yeah. artists still are calling me. That they're going to come in December. But instead of calling me to say, what's happening? When would they call me and say, are you painting a school this year? We want to paint your school. Knowing they're not going to get paid because I don't get any help. I don't have grants. The city of Miami doesn't do shit for us. You know how many times I've met the superintendent in 10 years? Zero. The guy came, the old one, came to the school for a photo op. I said something that pissed him off. I never saw him. No, again. we got to make that happen, though. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've, I've reached out to him. I've emailed them. I've called them. I go, why aren't you meeting the person who's helping your schools? What's the problem here? Yeah. You know, the principal, Dr. Williams, was taken out of Jose de Diego, sent to another school that if you saw these pictures that she sent me, bro, 
it, it you would you, I would give you name me a hundred countries you think this school is in. None of, none of them will be the United States because the idea is the United wow. States is this place of progress. It's a place where you grow. You give every child every In option. Miami? Oh, yeah, Miami. Wow. It was such a disaster. I mean, rust, asbestos, everything. I, I'd be afraid to let my child walk up to the second floor. She said, in a couple of years, when I have this fixed, come and do the project. We did the project last year. Wow. And it's gotten, it's not in Wynwood. It's in the middle of Miami. But it's got, it, it had people from all over the world visiting Miami, driving to the school to want to do tours of this school. It brings that attention. More kids go to that school. Now they have, you know, the, the Dutch government gave me money to help with that because I had some artists. Hey, look, the, the Dutch government, my own government won't do anything for it. My own fucking government won't do anything, won't reach out. I've reached out to politicians, to business people, all these people. I'm a 501c3. I give you tax breaks. No problem. You have to spend money. Let's do it here. Let's do it with the schools. Let me build a company that I could pay a staff and I could pay artists and still do what we do. That's what we're trying to do. And it makes a legit impact in the community. Bro, no one. No they, more direct. They, they don't, you can get I don't know what it is. I don't know. Yeah. You know, my sister, um, the last three weeks was like, my sister's a teacher. My mom was a teacher for 40 years. My two sisters are teachers. I almost became a teacher. So this is like very personal. For us, yeah. you know, seeing I went to public school my first four years, kindergarten to third grade. I remember those days. I remember I had Spanish every day, PE every day. I had all these things. That's not the case anymore. Now it's just about testing, testing, testing. My little niece who sings all day, draws all day, put her on a game and she'll figure out any puzzles. She's the most beautiful, and most intelligent little thing. But they drive them crazy with this testing. Testing, testing, testing. So these kids can go and they get A pluses throughout all year. But if they get below a certain number for this one fucking test, they don't graduate. That's crazy. Are you kidding me? Like that's what our school is. That's what it. That's what it's become. And they don't have the resources to teach these kids or to help these kids. When I was a kid, um, at least maybe because my mom was the teacher at the school when I went to public school, I had tutors. I had the opportunity where teachers were reaching out, you know, to to help. Because it wasn't as crazy as it is now. The money that they get paid is insane. You know, we don't have to get into the whole thing of how teachers get paid as opposed to like, you know, like look at the police issue. Cops don't get paid well. I know a lot of cops that are not paid well. They get a salary and they get good pensions and all that stuff, but they get cut, their money cut everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah, uh, so, so what are you doing? You're basically asking them to be corrupt. You're asking them to do shit that they shouldn't be doing so they can pay their fucking bill. Yeah. You know, same thing with teachers. These teachers that they're getting teachers that come out of high school or not high school. Uh, they're bachelors who don't know shit about, you know, they should spend two or three years subbing yeah. so they can learn how to be a teacher. No, they're throwing them right in. The money. Not, they don't know what to do. Yeah. They, they don't want to pay. My mom had to retire because they were going to cut. The, the number she would get out of, you know, for her pension, the percentage, they were going to cut that. So if she hadn't retired by this certain time, they would have, no, that number would have lowered. So she had to read. This is a woman who, to this day, still have people that when I was a child, I'm 43 years old. When I was a child, I remember these students. They still call her to this day. Wow. Say, you're the best teacher we ever had. You don't have that anymore. You have to have a teacher that is like... That doesn't care about anything else, about eating, about living, about you know living a respectable life. They just care about going to school and going home. You want to talk it, about the, it's say, hard. Yeah. It, look, I talk about. But wait, you want to talk about the raw project? Well, it seems very. It, it sounds it. It comes off as very uh, self beneficial, but the but the bottom line is, if you look at the statistics of what happens to these schools when you bring artists to it's not just them painting walls bro we do classes with the kids the artists paint with the kids we they have the option to paint or not if they want to we don't force them nothing it's just it's this incredible collaboration between these artists and the students and the community because those public schools belong to that community mom and dad probably went to that school 20 years ago you know grandkids might go to that school 20 years from now yeah. That's just how it is. Those are the community centers of those neighborhoods. So I, there are other organizations now that are popping up because they see the benefit as artists to, oh, let me go paint these schools. My issue is I just hope 
when and I, I want that to happen because I, I want every school on earth to get painted. All of them. I have nothing against any other project at all that paints murals. I think it's a beautiful thing. There are actual artists that want to do good things. And if they don't know who I am or my project, they know who they are. They go to their project. That's fine. But keep your fucking head on. Keep, keep your head straight. And don't work with shady ass people that want to steal money from the organization or want to steal money from schools like has been happening now. There have been schools in California that were being lied to us to what's going i don't know just a lot of shady shit keep keep your head on straight don't give in to nonsense that you shouldn't be giving into like letting the artist or letting the 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 school system tell you what to paint no the whole idea is to get this artist a golden bro go paint no politics, please, and no religion, because none of that fucking no matters drugs. 20 years from now. No drugs. No right? drugs no none of that no matters religion. 20 years from now. I don't give a shit what happens politically now. No one's going to talk about that dickhead in 20 years. Yeah. Forget that mural. And your religion, this is the United States of America. You could worship the fucking ceiling fan if you wanted to, and no one can tell you shit. You can start a church for the ceiling fan of whatever the fuck. There's a church, and <laughs> there's a church be, of Satan now. The church of whatever. It's been it's a church forever. of Maradona, though. You know? So, wow. like, so yeah. like, you should, no religion, no nothing, because why are you going to do that? If you want to paint a religion thing, there are Christian schools, there are Islamic schools, there are Jewish schools, go paint for them. Yeah. But the Dade County, Broward County, every public school that exists, that is the community's environment is their school no religion no politics aside from that do what you do go ahead and paint if you go to Jose de Diego for all these schools you'll see just a variety of murals that you're like my god where does this come from what does this have to do with the school and why probably is nothing here? that's what makes it amazing yeah. what is this here? what yeah. we tell them is hey golden bro uh, or hey Finn hey Kevin hey whatever here's the school you're painting this is the neighborhood this is when it opened this is the principal this is the demographic what are you going to do there? I don't want a sketch. I don't want nothing. But know where you're painting so that maybe you do have an idea where, oh, okay, I'm going to do this because this school is this. Or I chose to paint this because this is where I'm at in my career. But as you're showing kids, look, this is, this is, you know, this is an avenue you can explore yeah. in the future. This is something that, you know, this is what they do. And you want to you allow that creativity so you can influence children to be creative, to have imaginations. Yeah. You know, it has a huge and impact on, on kids. Massive, bro. Yeah. Massive. I like so that like, painting that MTO made at the corner. Tell them. Well, here's no, even though there was no politics, there was a, uh, uh, I don't call this political as much as they were, when Jose de Diego had, how, how are you the school in Wynwood and you have no art teachers, right? Um, a few of the artists painted pieces that were against that or that were, you know, that shone light to that. One of them was MTO from France. Did you see, you know that boy in the corner? Have you ever seen that big boy standing in the corner? It's, with a, the it's a corner cap? like that. And then he painted a kit against the corner. Oh, like, yes, like, yes, like, yes, like if yes, he's standing yes, in the yeah, corner. Yeah, yeah. That was, be, if you look at the dunce cap, it says artist. Why? Because artists were pushed aside, they were put in the corner. If you look at the mural right to the left of that, Italian artist Pixel Fancho, that he lives here in Miami now, last I know, um, it, he did uh, his own, ro he paints like robots and robotic piece of like, a, what was the American Gothic? You know American Gothic? The the farmers were the ones holding yeah, the Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 not that piece, but an homage to that. If you look at the mouth, it has the American flag sewn over their mouth. It wasn't a, an attempt to, to shit on America. It was just a school in this country is kicking art out. When you're supposed to be giving kid options, like a kid's not going to know what baseball is unless you give them a bat. Correct. They're not going to know what art is unless you give them a paintbrush. Yeah. Music, all of that. It's like none of that exists unless you present it to them and you let them choose. Well, no, it's to your point, like, and, you know, Golden knows my daughter. And the reason why she got into art was because I always wanted to give her, when she was growing up, I always tried to give her experiences. I never bought her, like, Barbies and stuff like that. And I was, it was her eighth birthday, bro. Like every dad, last minute, what am I gonna get her? I'm literally driving down 127 CBS. and 120, <laughs> bro. And I see a little poster in the corner on the floor, and it says Priscilla and Tiffany Art School. Whoop, pull in, go upstairs. How much is it? X a month. Buy the art cases. I get everything. She's now gonna go to art class one time a week. I go to the party, you know, give her the stuff. Hey, baby, here's your. She opens it. Okay. Goes and plays the Barbies. 
starts going to art, starts going to art, starts going to bam, 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 bro, and develops a love for it. And that, she did a, a picture of a flamingo on a nice canvas at like 10 years old. And because of that art piece, she got accepted into Gulliver School. And then she ended up being one of the top artists in Gulliver. And now she got a scholarship to SCAD. And now the art school just called her and made her a student ambassador for the art program, <laughs> managing the social media accounts. Because she like, was given that option. <laughs> she was given the option, bro. <laughs> Fucking life makes and I'm sense. Like, and if you like to see that string, you can see how the inception started with art. Yeah. If you are a company, if you're a politician, if you're a well-to-do person, whatever, there is a way to save our schools. If you do not pay attention to children now, they turn into piece of shits later. Yeah. It's that fucking simple. It's no other way to put it. I, it, you got, you have to get them young when they're incredibly impressionable and give them the right routes. You got to give them options. You got to, again, I said it, I said it before, like you could have 30 kids in a class and you could say, well, if I reach one, yeah, that's great. Let's reach 30 Yeah. because one is good. 29 end up being a problem. And they're not good at the same thing. I don't like math. My kids love maths. Like I like art. Some people. So you gotta have different options. I think the I think the, the education system is obsolete. It's no, like, and, like religion. They're and, preaching the same thing correct. for a thousand years. And, and it's, it's not how it used to be. Times, Artists yeah. can actually make money now. You know, yeah. you can actually grow it into a career. It was like before. Absolutely. It was it was thought about that when you die, you then you know make money or you become famous. Like it's funny. Like in the last interview, in the last thing we did, I have so many comments and so many DMs. It's funny how people see things. I wanted to say, like, we're not here to complain or to somebody call me, somebody DM me, like, you're fucking, like, you, why are you whiny bitch or whatever, right? It's like, I'm not whining. I'm not complaining. Like, I do pretty good for myself, and it's working. What I'm trying is to create awareness on what's happening and give an opportunity through your um, social media or whatever for people that really have something important to say, yeah. to be heard, so we can make real change, yeah. important change. Yeah. The We're majority not of the bad comments you got that I remember, you go to their page, they work for a real estate company. There you go. Imagine this. I mean, it's... It, I didn't think what, about that. This, guy did, that. this guy's the one that does the research. I'm, that you. What does that you? <laughs> I'm just getting the news, bro. This guy does the about, research. I mean, I'm complaining about, you know, oh, but you know this and that. It's like, you look, bro, I get it. But it's like, I get it. You you work for these companies and you want to be it's loyal. Fine. I don't fine. answer to them. I only yeah. answer to the positive things. But they're there. I think before you open your mouth, you really need to understand the, the overall context of things. Like, I'm not here to complain. I'm not here... To like brag about something. I didn't lose anything. I had it better than I ever had it in my life as of today. I'm just doing it for the younger generations. I'm doing it for the city. I'm doing it for for the for the culture in general. It's not yeah. for me. I'm, and, and, I'm and, good and, and, and with the way it is. Yeah. But I see it's gonna end and I don't want it to end. Not for me. I'll probably die in the next couple of years. I'm no, sorry. don't say that, bro. My heart is fucked up. Jesus. I'm gonna die anytime. It's for the new people. It's yeah. for the people they hear about Wingwood. They doesn't understand uh, what's happening. That they want. That they, they need to have that opportunity that we had. It was a blessing for me to be yeah. here, and it made me who I am. But I'm not complaining. I'm not bitching. I'm not ashamed. I'm not like. I'm, I don't give a fuck about the developers and all this shit. Like I do my own thing, but I want the information to be out to be right. Yeah, because we can still do great things. Well, I think like, like me, me, me knowing does. you, uh, you've been always, you've always been like a glass half full type of person too. You've always got along with everyone. You've always been a nice guy, and and you know you can you put a lot of love into what you do. Um, and I think what we're trying to do here is become and open a conversation and and create a voice. Like thankfully yeah, we have a platform so. that is trying to allow people to voice themselves in the community and open a space for us to talk about like real raw things, which is kind of like unedited to a degree. And it's just like putting it out there. So we're trying to be like getting the, the, the community leaders and being the voice of the city, like you know? That. And that's and, why I wanted Robert yeah. to come because he has something well, so no, you, special to say. Correct. You, know? like, you had DM'd the page after that stuff and I took a screenshot and I sent it to him. I'm like, yeah. do you know, a lot of people DM me and he goes, he's legit, bro. Bring yeah, it on. Yeah, man, like look what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking changing all these kids' yeah. life. Miami had and an nobody art. fucking know who he is. Miami you know? has been an artistic. I had no scene. idea about the school stuff. Nobody That's crazy. Does. Nobody but you've seen does. him. Bro, I've but you've seen him. You know what you know yeah. what they are. But I've never so, like knew the whole story behind that. Like and you don't even have to. That's 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 the point. The ones who need to know that story are 
the administration, the community, the school, the parents, people who are associated with that school. True, correct. For everyone else in the world to want to come and see it because it's a beautiful work of art, that's 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 great. That there's there could be many levels of how you know what it is or why you know what it is, and then you learn and you're like, oh, that's really cool, or oh, that's cool, whatever, fine, let's do that at my school. The amount the amount of calls that I get on a weekly basis to do schools, you have no idea. The so what's what, what's your plan then? Like, what, are you trying to attack more schools, or or how does it? Paint, you need to get funded in order to pay I artists to go to schools. As many schools as possible. I I, I don't want to. I I, <laughs> I I try to check myself when I speak to my friends because I can sound so miserable so much, and people. No, you're passionate. I can tell. Yeah, but, but a lot of it yeah. is miserable because I I'm so. <laughs> I'm so, and you're honest, <laughs> bro. I'm so, I'm so frustrated. I'm so, I'm, I see all these organizations getting money for bullshit. Good on them. I don't want them to not get their money. I'm wondering why aren't organizations that save schools from closing, that help schools recruit children, that brings them more money, so that your kid can learn art. Music have better books for math, better books for science. Now they have sports after school. Now they have money to have YMCA. Like, why is that not being taken care of? What What is the problem here? Yeah. Is it because <clears throat> there's no money going in your pocket? You're the superintendent of the school, bro. Yeah. You already got paid. You're getting a salary. Why haven't you reached out to talk to me? I know there's a superintendent now that I, I I've been told is a very nice guy, but he's on his way out. Like apparently he's on his way out, so it's gonna be someone new in a couple of years. I, I don't know, but what's the excuse? How is it that I'm allowed to come into your schools to paint them? Because the ones I work for are the principals. Those are the ones that I speak to. I talk to them. They speak to their district managers. They all love it. They all want it fine. But at the end of the day, it takes, I, yeah, it takes I, money, bro. It, I, takes, it takes money. Like you know, and the majority of the money is yeah. in my pocket. Yeah, it takes money. People My partner, know. now that she she lives in another country right now, and, and like it's her pocket. It's her reaching out to... She's an art dealer on top of a million things that she does. She's a master diver. She speaks to her. Her and the art, the artist that she um, represents have taken money from their work to help fund the project. It's insane. I'm horrible at getting money for anything. I'm good at making the project happen. Yeah, you I'm need a good. person that can recruit and get donations. But man. I need to pay that person. Yeah. You know, Not I, need necessarily. To, I, I don't know how to write grants. Yeah. I do my best. Chat GPT, whatever the fuck it is that I could use now. I still don't get these grants. I've had, I've had people that run grants. I'm not going to say names. Local that have 5 million for this. The, they tell me straight up, you're a guarantee. So then give me an example, uh, an excuse later telling me, well, you know, we're not the ones that choose this. There's a whole group of people that choose this. And there's so many people. It's apply. a commissioner and you know, a board. It's like, are you kidding me, dude? Yeah. Like, you know, I, now I can't do the school now. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm very fortunate. Bro, when I tell you I am so unbelievably fortunate that my parents came here in the 60s, early 60s, bought the house. I live at home, bro. I'm a 43-year-old man, lives at home because I can't afford to rent anywhere because all my money goes to my fucking project. That's incredible. You know, I can't. It's crazy. Thankfully, I have, I'm very lucky that I have a roof over my head. I yeah. can still, you know, buy some food and all that stuff, but I can't. I can't own a home. I can't, I can't have a girlfriend. I can't pay for any of this shit. Why? Because <laughs> I have to focus sad, on this. And none of that, look, but that's bro, passion. Bro. I'm, that's I, I passion, care. bro. Not, not everybody he's, does that. Not everybody does that. The frustration so is that the people who were helping, the district, the city, because this helps the city who are massively at fault for what's happening in Wynwood because they put no restrictions on what happens. That's another thing that we didn't talk about was the fact that the city is involved and they don't do shit about what's happening in Wynwood because I remember... When the streets were destroyed, the sidewalks were fucked up. There still were garbage cans on the sidewalks at Wynwood, and they're already putting meters. So you have to pay to park in Wynwood. Yeah. The streets were destroyed. Jobs. The buildings were rotting. The sidewalks were destroyed. Nothing is being happened. No one's paying artists. Nothing. But they go and they put meters. And three then, and three, then, and then three people, bucks an hour. Yeah, three bucks an hour. And then people wonder why everybody has a handicap. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 man, I, I don't know. There is a blueprint to how we can fix it. Art is a way. 
music is a way art all kinds of art you know we could do the I, the things that i've spoken to with schools i've had professional athletes like nfl athletes mlb athletes alonzo morning came to our first school because we did his mural his organization was helped us out that first year not with finances but with like you know putting it out there and promoting it thinking my god this is going to blow up. We're going to be able to do a hundred schools. We're going to be able to, you know, build a little business here where, you know, and a nonprofit, you have to cap yourself. Yeah. You know, it's not like you're making quadrillions of dollars. I mean, at least not the ones that I know. No, 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 they don't. You know, because there are five hundred one c threes that make God knows, God knows how much money. Yeah. But, but if we thought, man, this is going to blow up. Like, look what it did to this school. Nothing, nothing. It's like, there's no, there's no. And it's the same developers that keep getting this attention as if they change this world when all they did was steal the idea from local artists and push them out. That's all they did. And it wasn't even that first year. It was a few years later. Yeah. You know, in the 90s, you had these graffitis, these massive walls that the graffiti artists were painting. And then in the you know early 2000s, you know, Banksy came to Miami with a couple artists that were showing him around time, like, around town. Like one of the best artists I have ever come out of Miami wasn't even painting. With Banksy. He was just helping Banksy out. Because Banksy, for some reason, wanted to come here and paint here. Fine. Whatever reason he was. Then 2007, primary flight said, no, fuck this. We're going to turn this into something. Miami has some of the greatest artists in the world. Some of the greatest artists come here. Let's build something. And primary flight did that. They turned Wynwood into the greatest outdoor museum on earth. To then have it stolen from them by developers that all they want to do is, you know, raise the square footage up. Sell it to someone else who's not gonna give a shit about the community, and that's it. They're yeah, just, just gonna, another another thing. At the end, you. at the end, they're gonna end up with the fucking so much trouble. They're gonna end up with like the worst shit. Their money is gonna be nothing because they have you have Midtown that is nice and it's planned like that. Yeah, you, know? you can live there, but in Wingwood, it's not planned like that. They're gonna end up with something that is not worth what they think it worth, and they're gonna ruin this for everybody else. So. Great. Brother, it's really been a real pleasure. Yeah, like, this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a good one. Um, and I think you spoke a lot of honest. And uh, I think, bro, I think that like we can make some, you know, putting putting this out there, we might have a chance of making some changes and getting some more opportunities. I like you know? it, man. I'm so glad you, know? you came. Yeah. I have to go, ladies. Yeah. But Robert, right, bro, you are the.